Hey, it's me, Biggie B, Bees Industries. Back with you to do this uh, second part of the Building Connected training. We did uh, one yesterday, Building Connected training one yesterday, uh, where we sort of started with the basics of getting going. And today I'm looking out my office window, it's zero degrees out and it's snowing. So we're gonna stay inside and do some more training and finish up this Building Connected. Probably about another 30 minute video and uh, then we should have a good handle on building connected it's not a very complicated software and uh you guys should have a handle on it after this i didn't make any video to show you how to start your account you should be able to figure that out go to buildingconnected.com and sign up for the free trial and just follow the prompts and then and then that video i made yesterday will explain everything from there uh, don't do the paid for version, just do the free version. Uh, you probably never need the paid for version. So, uh, again, watch my video from yesterday, get your account going, and let's jump right in here. I'm going to share my screen, and let's jump back in and finish off this uh, building connected training situation here. So, again, you should already have an account and be able to log in, uh, buildingconnected.com, start a free account, watch my previous video, and then we'll get you to here. This is the big board. This is what we went through yesterday. I'll just recap it real quick. Uh, big board is where we're at here. Uh, this top menu is just a bunch of paid for upgrades. Like I said, we don't need to do the paid for, we just do the free version. Uh, so, just extra tools that are part of the upgraded paid for package. The upgraded paid for package is sort of like a CRM, uh, CRM project management tool to manage your pre-construction workflow. There's other software out there that does that. Um, better software probably that integrates into your long, your longer project process and not just the uh, not just the pre-construction. So just the free version. Again, that top menu is just tools we don't use over here. These are this uh, left menu bar is tools we will use. This is your personal settings, name, job title, phone numbers, picture. We obviously all editable. We went through all this in our last video. Company information. Uh, you can add additional emails. Um, you can change your company info a little bit from here. Uh, it does integrate with plan grid for takeoff. If anyone's using plan grid for takeoff, I wouldn't recommend it. I use blue beam. It's, it's the best, so I wouldn't really use the plan grid. Uh, it, does, it integrates with Procore, Procore, which is nice. So, so you can get your Procore account and building connected account, you know, integrated talking to each other. Uh, Procore is for, for project management software. Uh, Again, here's my starter page I have set to the bid board, Mountain Time, English, Imperial. I could edit all that if I needed to. Notifications, um, I, all my RFPs come to my email. Everyone I get, I get an email. I could change that. I could turn it off. I could get no emails. I could get all emails on certain ones. However, I want to set that up. I don't mind getting emails, obviously. Um, Okay, company information. Here's myself, my uh, estimator, Rochelle. We, you can add coworkers. You can create five, six person team of estimators all within the free version of the software. So I could add coworkers. I could add emails here and then they'll, they'll get the invites as well and be able to help me estimate as part of my team. Company profile. I didn't spend too much time on this yesterday, so let, let me spend a little time on it today so we can understand it better. Uh, Edit company info. My here's my company name. That probably is not going to change. Uh, although you could edit it. Uh, labor type. So for me, I'm non-union and I do prevailing wage jobs. I could turn that off. I could I could add that I am union. I could do none. Like I don't do labor at all. So I'm non-union. I cover prevailing wage. All, all the jobs aren't prevailing wage, but I have the capacity to do those. That's a different uh, training. Different different software to track all that. LCP tracker, we'll do that one day. Uh, enterprise type, I'm a small business enterprise, but I could add you know, other enterprise types 
women business, minority business, historically underutilized, disadvantaged business, disabled veterans. So different types of businesses you could add here for different classifications. Business types. I'm a construction manager, inspector, consultant, general contractor, and subcontractor. Those are the different business types or scopes I'll cover. I'm not an architect, civil engineer, electrical engineer. I could add those if I were. You know, you could just you could be on here as just a structural engineer and only pick up, you know, that type of work. So you can turn that off. Like if I don't do inspections anymore, I could turn that off. Or add to it and say I picked up uh I don't know, some kind of certificate in environmental engineering or degree or I have someone on my company, I could add that that skill or that that business type. Uh, my website, you want to add that tagline, just a little info about your business. Bees Industries, a construction company. You got my phone number, general contractor. Logo, you want to add your logo. Office information, here's my address, phone numbers. Uh, work information. So we didn't jump into this yesterday. I do. I cover a lot of scopes of work. I, I own a few businesses that do different things. And then uh, I, I bid for other customers on different scopes of work that I don't do, but customers do. So I, I bid for them on those. So I get invitations to bid on different scopes of work. Uh, and here we can change that. I could, you know, get rid of it. Like I don't do uh, underground utilities, I could just X that out and get rid of that. Or site concrete. I just hit the X and it's gone and, and then I hit save and that scope of work is gone. Say I want to add scope of works, scopes of work, like I got a certificate in asbestos abatement. I could just add that. And then when I hit save, now I'll get invitations for, for abatement as well. Uh, I don't want to add that. So I'll just click that off um these are all a so let's see try c carpet casework cast stone caulking um you just type in the, the scope of work that you do and then you you just click and save so d you know what detention systems deck grooving deep foundation testing what have you so here you can add your scopes of work and take away scopes of work say you don't want to do that anymore yeah get rid of it say you pick some something else up and you want to start doing it, you add this here in, in the work performed. Hit save after you make any changes. Uh, service area. Kind of self-explanatory, but we'll get into it a little bit. Yes, in our last video yesterday, I had Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. Not sure exactly why. Uh, but you can see I can just just that easily. I can add whole states. So Pennsylvania. New York, New Jersey gone. I'm not I'm not doing any work there. I don't I don't plan on doing any work there. I never have. I don't know why I chose those to begin with. Uh I do want to expand my footprint in the Midwest though. So you know I could choose a whole state of Missouri like this. And when I hit save, now you know I'm gonna get bid invitations for the entire state of Missouri. Over here I click on Missouri and I can see all the different counties. But Missouri is big and St. Louis is far, so I don't really want to cover the entire state of Missouri. I'm going to click off of that. And uh, I'm going to scroll in. I want to expand my footprint, but I don't want to do all of Missouri. I just want to do Kansas City. It's about a 12 hour drive from Denver, so not bad. And there's a lot of development. It's growing, so there's tons of development going on there right now. Uh, so I'm just going to choose the couple counties that are right there for Kansas City, two, two, three counties right around Kansas City there. I'm just going to choose those and instead of the whole state of Missouri. We'll just do the Kansas City area. So you see how I can just choose counties. Or I could choose the whole state. I could choose multiple states. And after you do anything, hit save. And then that's good. Now I'll get invitations to bid in the Kansas City area. So you can add. Uh, County, states, territories. You can delete your office. Uh, I'm not sure why I would. I'm not going to do that. I could add certificates here. Do not use list again. It's contact sales. It's part of that upgraded package. Don't pay for it. 
Not necessary. Bid board, that takes us back to our standard operating page. And then this last one over here is this qualifications. Uh, trade tab, permissions and settings. Again, it's part of the upgraded package. The paid for version, so it's nothing you, you really want to use or mess with. One of these days we'll buy the paid for version and we'll get to know all the tools. Maybe we'll do a couple of videos on how to use the full version of Building Connected. I just don't think it's necessary. There's so many other softwares out there for, for free or cheap or that you're already using, so, so don't pay for it. OK, that's kind of the recap on the stuff from yesterday that we don't use or that we use minimally or how we can change around our account a little bit. Uh, yesterday in our last video, we did talk about how to get projects undecided, accepted, submitted, won, archived. Uh, in our undecided, we have some projects that are due in 20 hours. I'm going to leave them. They're not quite old enough yet. I still might get to them. These are projects we got invited on, but we didn't say we would send bids to. So right now I'm doing uh, erosion control, landscaping, SWIP. SWIP, erosion control, irrigation, and landscaping. That's what I want to bid on. So I'm going to go through here and find some stuff. Here's, here's uh, erosion control right here and SWIP. And I want to bid on those, Plano, Texas. That's within my area. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten the invitation. So I'm going to click this green check mark and say that I'm bidding on that SWIP and I'm bidding on that erosion control. And then it moved it from the undecided into our accepted. Automatically, once I once I said I was going to bid, it moved it right on over. So I'm going to go into the accepted now. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to go find those, uh, the ones I just said I would do. They might be far out. I'm really going to find the closest one besides these ones that are due in an hour because I won't make it in time. See how these are due tomorrow, 24 hours from now, a little less than 24 hours. Here's one that's due tomorrow by the end of the day, 2 p.m. Mountain time. So this is a job that we said we'd bid on. It's accepted. And let's go ahead and see what we can do to turn around a bid today. So from here, I'm going to click on the title of the job and it's going to open up that opportunity for me. And then in here, and here's the full opportunity. So on this first page overview, it gives information. Here's the, the general contractor that we're bidding to. Here's the, the estimator, Christopher Miranda. Here's his phone number and his email address, the representative for Anchor Construction and Management, Inc. So that's probably their estimator. That's who we're going to send our bids to. Here's where the project is on the map. It's in Plano, Texas. Said it's due on the 16th. The RFI's request for information was due by January 9th. So the, the time for questions has passed. Uh, date invited was December 28th. Bid request, uh, the project name, trade, we're doing the SWIP. Here's the address for the project. Project size, 341,000 square feet. So that's uh, two, four, six, seven. It's about eight acres. That's about seven to eight acres, about, about eight acres there. Eh? Uh, let's see, the project information. Here's the information about the project. So this page, the overview just has a bunch of information on it, but it's information we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a PDF. I'm going to come over here from our overview. I'm going to hit this arrow, turns blue, this drop down, and I'm going to click print. And it's going to bring up this uh, print screen here. And then I'm going to click this arrow to download it. 
And then once it's ready to download, I'm going to choose desktop. I like to work for my desktop. You can download it to your uh, downloads or whatever file you want to work out of. I download it to desktop because after we're done with it, we're just going to delete it from our desktop and it's going to live in the cloud. So download it to your desktop. I'm going to change the title here because I need some more information. And I need it to read a little bit differently, so. I'm going to title it RFP. And the date. Zero that date that it's due zero one sixteen dash two oh two three. Then title of the job, so I got RFP, the date, the title. And then I'm going to add the address of the job, the location of the job. I'm going to do that later after it's on my desktop. I could do it now, but I didn't click and copy and save it, so I'll just do it afterwards. So I got RFP, I got the date and the title, the name of the job. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And that's basically saving this right here, the information from that front, from that uh, front page. Saved all this information. Let's see, what is that project address? Here it is right here. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Onto our RFP. It's good that these files have this information on it. That way, when someone's looking for it. Your estimators or something, they can see. They can see as much information as they need to see about it. Uh, something I won't save for some reason. Let me uh, just type it in manually, I guess. 1811 Little York Road, Houston, Texas. 1811 Little York Road, Houston, Texas. Eighteen eleven Little York Road Houston Texas and where to go seven seven zero nine three. Seven seven zero nine three. Okay, there we go. So now this is essentially that information that's on the on the overview page. But what we can do is now we can send it in an email to any of our estimators. We can attach it to our bid calendar internally. Whatever we want to do with it, we have all this information as a PDF. So. Um, our estimators and internal folks don't have to go to the building account or building connected account all the time. This is the information there. So now we have a PDF for it. And uh, we can put it on our big calendar or send it to our estimators, whatever, whatever we need to do. So that's the overview page. We took all this information from the overview page and we just made it a PDF real quick by hitting print and print again and then rename it and save as a PDF. Then from there, in this window, we're really just using this uh, top menu bar right here. So after the overview and we collect that information, we get the RFP, we go to files and we just download all. You can do this or you can just download all either way. So it's going to take a while. It's going to go to space and back and then it's going to download all of these files. And in here. There's going to be the the blueprints. Bid information. All kinds of documents and information the GC needs you to know. Uh, but most importantly, that that's where the blueprints live. So right now it's downloading to my desktop. It's going to take a while. Because. Uh, 
my new Wi-Fi internet is uh, is designed for upload speeds for video content and stuff, but it's slower on the download speeds. So it's telling me now like eight eight minutes or so. So now the blueprints are downloading and other files are downloading into the zip. So we'll uh, leave it alone and let it let it do its thing there. And while it's doing that, we'll see what else we need to do. So that's the overview. Again, all the information, and then we download it, create a PDF, and we can email and save that PDF anywhere. Files, we go to files, and we download all. Addendums, files, you want to download all of it, even though you're not going to use all of it. There'll be stuff buried in there that you might need, so be careful not to overlook. Addendums and instructions, bid sheets. Um, all kinds of info will be in there. Messages. There's no messages in here now, but you want to check this because a lot of times the estimators, the people from the general contractor will drop messages in here that are pertinent to the job. So you always want to check this and see if someone has left messages in there. Someone has asked questions and been answered stuff that you might need to know. There's nothing in there now, but here's where you can ask a question. So. You can hit new message. And you can subject. It's just like sending an email, but it sends it internally. You can add files if you want. Uh, it's going to send it to this anchor construction management. Let's go see who it's going to send it to. But basically, it's just an internal email. So if you have questions about the job, you can subject, body, send just like sending an email you can attach stuff and you can ask questions um let's see if we can discard there we go we'll get rid of that we don't want to save that draft so back in overview if we send off a question it's going to go to christopher miranda so if we send a question in there christopher will get the question he'll respond to us bid form this is where we're going to go to turn around our bid. We don't need to go here yet. But after we download our blueprints and we do our takeoff estimating in Bluebeam, that's a couple other training videos. Uh, we're just focusing on building connected right now. So after our blueprints download and we do our takeoff estimating and put together our proposal, this is then where we're going to come back to our bid form. And we're going to put together our bid in, in building connected and send it. So this is for the stormwater pollution protection plan, design, implementation, whatever. You put your bottom line price. We'll just say, you know, 19,373.65. Uh, With tax, it always ends up being some weird, you know, random number. So you put your bottom line price in there. Then you come here and you add your message. I wouldn't leave this blank, you know, say something nice. Uh, but to make it fast for myself, so I'm not, I don't like to type. I'm a construction worker after all. Uh, I have templates. So on my desktop, I have email templates already saved. So I can just for quick reference, I can come here. I know I'm bidding on SWIP or an erosion control. So I'm just going to copy and paste. This email instead of typing it every time i just keep these on the desktop for quick reference so i put my bottom line price in here i'm going to send uh christopher was his name a message i'm just going to copy paste instead of type i have to type a little bit because i don't know the person's name in the in the template so hello christopher attaches our proposal for the SWIP compliance and erosion control for your what project? See, I didn't. That's not in my template because I don't. I don't know what project it's going to be. So I'm just going to erase that for your Sarai Retail Center project. Center project. 
best regards. Hello, Christopher attaches our proposal for the SWIP compliance and erosion control for your Sarai Retail Center project. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please contact me directly. Thank you for your time and consideration. Best regards. So instead of typing this out, I should probably add this to my template as well. My name and phone number. I don't know why I continue to type that. But I do. So in my template, instead of typing all this out every time, I just copy and paste off my template. Uh, I'm going to add my name and phone number to the template so I don't have to so I don't have to uh, continue to type that. The only things I should type is the person's name and the name of the project. So we got our bottom line price. We got our nice message. We don't want to leave it blank. We want to say something nice, but we don't want to type every time. So keep a keep some templates available where you can just copy and paste. Then we're going to add our attachment. I don't have an attachment right now um because i haven't created the proposal yet so we're downloading the blueprints and we got to do the takeoff estimating and, and create our proposal but i think i saved one on downloads yeah see this uh the blueprints are still downloading the file is not complete but i saved this other proposal from a different project just to uh just to be able to do this. So here's a proposal from a different project. Always in a PDF. You don't you don't want to send proposals in any type of editable document, obvious for obvious reasons. But so this is my proposal: SWIP erosion control, line items, prices, bottom line price is uh, 32073. So we'll just go with this. I copy and paste everything I can, obviously, make it easy. So that's our bottom line price. I drop that in here. We copied and pasted a nice message for Christopher. It sounds custom. It sounds like we typed it just for him, but we copied and pasted it. We did type his name though, so make him special. And then we're gonna add our proposal. Click this desktop it could be in a different folder wherever you keep it i keep it it's on my desktop i will split proposal right here open okay so we have our price we have our nice greeting we have our proposal attached and i'm going to hit preview and send And here's my last step before I send it uh, to review it. So here's my business, here's my company. Here's here's sort of what it's gonna look like on his end. If I hit submit, it's going to him. I don't want to because this is actually the wrong proposal. Uh, we're just doing this for training purposes. So I check it out, make sure everything's copacetic, then I hit submit. I'm going to go back to edit though, and I'm going to X out of that because that's not correct. I'm just going to erase that. And I'm going to erase that. We're not ready to send it to them yet. We're just uh, just figuring it out. So again, once we, once we have our takeoff estimating proposal complete, we put the price here. Nice message here. We attach our proposal, review it, and hit send. After I send the proposal through Building Connected, I always send it to their email as well because I want to open up a conversation outside of Building Connected. I want to, I want their estimator and me and my estimators to be talking through our business emails and building a relationship, not, not going through Building Connected. So after I hit send and, and, the, and the proposal went to them through Building Connected, I'll go back here and I'll click on Christopher Miranda and I'll grab his email address, copy and paste, and then I'll send him an email with the same the same uh, templated email with the same proposal attached, everything. Everything I just sent him through Building Connected, I'll send this estimator, uh, Christopher, to his business email. And then usually, I'd say eight times out of ten, they just communicate right through the business email. 
which is what we want. We want to build that relationship and outside of building connected. I think the ones that continue to communicate through building connected are the ones that have bought the upgraded package, I believe. So they're probably trying to get all their money's worth and they and they communicate through that platform as well. But most of them, it's just business to business email is, is the way you want to go. So let me just recap it real quick. Uh, looks like, oh, let's finish this process. I'm sorry. Our plans have done are done downloading. So what I'm going to do Let's go next side of that. And I'm going to go back to my downloads. And I'm going to pull those plans out. And now the zip file, I can I can send the zip file in an email to any of my estimators. I can attach this zip file to uh, my Google Calendar, my Bid Calendar, Outlook, Google, whatever I'm using internally. Uh, I'm going to rename it though. So here I have RFP. I have RFP with the date, the job name, and the address. I'm going to rename this the same thing, except RFP is going to be plans. So now I have plans, the date, the name, the date, the job is due, the bid is due, the name, and the address. So any of my estimators, once I throw this on our bid calendar, I email it to my estimator. Just from the title alone, they have information that they need. These are the plans. Here's the due date. Here's the name of the job. Here's the address. This is the RFP. And I'll put both of those on my Google bid calendar and I'll, or, and or I'll email them to whoever I need to. So then the, the process after that would be doing the takeoff and estimating where you would take the plans and you would upload them into Bluebeam. Uh, different people use different takeoff softwares. I, I only recommend Bluebeam is the best. So we'll do a couple of training videos coming up on Bluebeam so we can go through that takeoff and estimating process. Uh, so if you want to get ahead of that, I would download uh, Bluebeam.com, I believe is what it is, Bluebeam dot com and download the free trial version and just start to get used to it or whatever because we'll do some training in that uh, but for now to finish off our building connected training uh one last time i'll just walk through these steps really quick to recap it we we go from undecided we choose a project that's uh further out in date that we want to bid on. Um, okay, so there's landscape. So here's landscape project in Manville, Texas. So I would click bidding. Then I would go to accepted. I would find that project or any other project that I plan on bidding on. Here's erosion control. Uh, let's do 117. And I click on the title to open up the opportunity. Brings up the overview with all the information that me and my estimators and my team and company need. I hit this arrow, turns blue. I select print. It brings up this print screen. I select download and then I rename it RFP date, RFP the date that it's due, the title of the job, the name of the job, and the address of the job, and I save it to my desktop. And then I come over here to the files and I click this all button or I click this. Either way, it does the same thing. And I download all the files. And then once all the files are downloaded, I go and grab them out of my downloads file onto my desktop and I rename them plans with the date, job name, job address. And then from there, I can do whatever I want with these. I can add them to calendars, I can send them in emails, whatever I need to do.
And then if I have questions about the job, I go to messages. And I send messages to the to the. Um, general contractors estimator or the representative, whoever's from the general contractor, whatever questions I have, we can go back and forth here. After I've done my takeoff estimating in Bluebeam and put together my uh, proposal in Excel and I've saved it to a PDF. I then come in here and I add. The total project value. I copy and paste a nice email in, or a nice uh, message in here. Personalize it with their name, whatever. A little bit of typing, not too much. I attach my PDF proposal and then I send off the bid. I review it and send it. So that's the process there to to sort of finish off your building connected work workflow. Uh, in our first video, we kind of went through the basics. In the second video, we dove a little deeper into how to download the blueprints and send off and send off your proposals. Again, send off your proposals through email as well. Don't just use Building Connected. Don't you know? Make sure you send them an email as well. So not too hard to use. Uh, we'll get into the takeoff software later on in other training videos. This is Building Connected. If you're trying to grow your construction company, subcontractor company, you're trying to get bigger, better projects, commercial projects, go from residential to commercial, whatever the case may be. Building Connected is going to be you know, one of your main vehicles for getting invitations to bid. Uh, Big EB, B's Industries is going to be one of your main people to help you get there. So don't hesitate to give me a call, email, whatever, if you have questions. And uh, my team can help your team and we can we can make this thing happen. I'm going to quit sharing my screen now and. See. Uh, oh, there I am. OK, so that rounds out. That's building connected training two. that should take you where you need to go. Um, again, if you have questions, I'm always available. Please uh, like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel for further further trainings. Um, coming up in the next days or weeks, we're going to get into Bluebeam and some of the takeoff softwares. Uh, Biggie B, Bees Industries. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.